Okay, so we want to make ourselves a tasty, tasty missile. Right, what do we have to do? Well, unfortunately, this screen is a little bit on the weird side. Now, I, I have done a little bit of a boo-boo. I started making some missiles and then screwed up, and I started using the word prime instead of the word square, and it was it was horrific. I got my squared and prime numbers mixed up. I made some okay missiles, but generally I think I can improve. So I'm going to record this bit, which again, which is why you might be like, well, what's just happened? Why is the screen flickered or whatever it was that I cut? Um, that'd be because this is me with more knowledge doing something. And which is why if you've noticed the date may be different. I don't know. I think I went ahead some days as I did some tech. The tech, of course, being the uh, please research me an engine or whatever. It doesn't matter. Nothing really fun happened. Uh, so, this is the missile design thing. So we need to design a missile here. It's got MSP, which is missile size points. Generally, the smallest missile missile you can get is like six, which is the smallest like anti-ship missile that's going to be any good. Um, we've got engine types, etc. These are two engines I've already designed for missiles. Ignore them, we're probably going to have to do a different one. You have warhead strength, fuel capacity, agility, and reactor. Now, warhead strength, for one missile size, we've got a strength of four, which is the current tech we've got. So... How do you design a missile? Well, honestly, my advice is there is a lovely Excel document on the forum. A lovely Excel document, which I have on my screen. Let's bring it down here. There we go. This is a lovely Excel document. And you might be like, well, now we're playing Excel. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is going to be something very important. We're going to explain about damage layout. So as I mentioned previously, you've got like your armor and then you've, you know, you've got to get further into it. So multiple layers of armor. If you've got like, you know, this is two to seven. So that's like yeah, five layers of armor. Well, sorry, six because you're including two. Yeah. So that's six layers of armor, whatever. You would see that, oh, this one managed to get through with 49 points of damage. However, if you just keep peppering them with these, eventually it'll eat away at the armor. So you want something with the maximum amount of death. So generally you like squared numbers. So two, uh, sorry, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 64, 81, 100. These are the numbers you like, 121, uh, because they allow the maximum amount of depth. Now, if we only had, say, a 8 damage missile instead of a 9, it would only go to here. So it would do 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, because that is, of course, a square. So 4 goes in. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Square goes in again, so you can get the maximum amount of depth. So ideally, you want to make missiles with square numbers. So, for our missile, we want to do 4... Or nine points of damage. I'm not going to go for quite for the gigantic missiles yet. I'd like to go for just a, a smallish missile to begin with. Now, the reason I'm going for smallish missiles, I want a six size anti ship missile, is because I think that's the smallest you can get on a launcher that's like a general missile. I'm not sure. But it's also the minimum size for the detection. Um, it is basically saying, right, this is the minimum you can be and have the minimum chance of detecting me. You can have make smaller missiles, but they also share the same chance of detection. So, the smaller you can have the missile, the lower the chance of detection, which means the enemy detect it later, which means that their defenses kick in later. They can also, you know, not pick up so much data about you or whatever. Not as important against the AI. Uh, so, I will try and make them a size 6. So, we probably want to get this Excel document open, and we want to go for total missile size points. I would like that to be 6. Desired damage. Let's try and get a 9. We can always go down to 4 if need be. Um... So, suddenly, we have, this is our tech, this is uh, our engine tech, this is our fuel thing, this is our power modifier, um, this is our damage tech. Okay, so I think by just putting these two numbers in, we now have a load of information. So, against target, moving at 5 kilometers per second, we can make a missile that has a 62.4% chance of hitting it, and a range of 112 cl uh, million kilometers, so that is about three times the moon's orbit, or maybe two and a half times the moon orbit, and it will travel at a speed of 22,000 kilometers. So it should get there in under five seconds. That's good. Now we can make faster ones, but you will see that we start to lose a little bit of accuracy. Now I think the accuracy drop from here to here for that little bit of extra range might be worth it. Here to here, possibly. Here to here, maybe. Here to here, no, because we're starting to drop about 4.8%. Uh, three points, I'm sorry. It's just not quite worth it for me. I think we'd probably want something along the lines of this. Now, if we wanted to go, you know, a bigger missile, we can do. But I don't think we need to worry particularly about this. Now, the reason that I'm saying this elk cell document is amazing is because it gives you stats that you need to put into your missiles to make them exactly like you want them. 
Seriously. So we need to pick what we want. Um, if they're, like, worst case scenario, if we get an enemy that is moving at 10,000 meters per second at this point in the game, probably want an above 30% chance to hit them. Yeah, we're going to go over 124 million kilometer range. So we're going to go over this one. So I'm going to select this. And we are going to start reading off some of the stats. So the one things we need to know are the fuel, the agility, and importantly, the engine MSP. This is really important. 3.16. So I'm going to put this on a different screen. And I would like to go to make some technologies. So boop. I would like a... Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Missile engine. I like a magnetoplasma drive with a fuel consumption of three times. Remember, 300%, which is double our technology because missiles get to go double the speed of your technology. Your technology is 1.5 we've got at the moment for engine power. Cool. We can go 300 with, an en with a missile engine because missile engines are designed to fire once and never be fired again. Whereas actual warships are like, yeah, our engine needs to keep working for years. Missiles are like, yeah, it needs to work for like five seconds. Which is why missiles can be like ridiculously powerful because they burn themselves out, which is fine. Uh, fuel consumption is fine. Here we go. MSP, missile size points. If I check what we had, we wanted a missile size point of 3.16. Which means over half of our six missile size point missile is made of missile. Like this thing is like about 55% like engine. Um, I know I just said it's missile made of missile. That's a little bit on the obvious side. Uh, I just read off the number. It was 316. Yes. Oh, God. So we'll be back at the start. 316. 316. 316. We will have you three. Oh, God. It's still scrolling. It's still like, oh, stop it. Ah, oh, no. Take it away. Right. Start from scratch. Just don't scroll too much. Resist the urge. 316. Here it comes. Bingo. So, because we want it a bit, you know, pretty, pretty good engine, the fuel consumption is 1.37 times, whatever, I don't care. Now, notice the speed there. Now, remember at the beginning of the game when we had, like, an entire vessel with a 60 EP engine going around the solar system? We have a single missile with a 7.6 EP engine. A single missile! Our first vessel had a 60 EP engine for the entire several thousand ton vessel. This missile has, you know, more than 10% of that. If I show size in tons, I don't think that will actually show us anything, which is a shame. I was hoping it would convert missile size points, but oh well. Uh, right, I think we're ready to do this, and you are the Shane Kills. I'm not going to put Corp because it was getting a little bit long. So, Shane Kills, Magnetoplasma Drive. Create. Close. And if we pull open the research, we should see that they're... No, it'll be under propulsion, won't it? Shane kills. There we go. It's really tempting to turn on Space Master mode and just be like, I would like to quick do all of these. I know that several people have said on stuff like the Reddit and the forums, they've said that they kind of find this stuff tedious where you get a engineering project you have to research in addition to your research research projects because you're like, all right, I want to design a, a spaceship. Right, oh, I've got to make them the engine. And now I've got to research the engine. And finally, I could put the engine. Oh, the engine's too big. Oh, the engine's too small. I should do something differently. Okay, I'll research a different engine. And to make that right now, research it. Okay, now I'll put that in. That can be annoying. I thoroughly get that. I think that I'm going to stick with it for a moment. I will research it properly, but I can't imagine myself doing this for long. I will get tediously bored. So that will take you until 22nd of January. No, sorry, it won't. It will take you until end of the month. So let's go forwards by five days. Five days. So if I open our missile screen, and I will need to close that and reopen it to get it to show our new engine. There we go. The Shane kills. 7.6 EP Magnetoplasma Drive. So, by plugging the numbers from our lovely Excel, come on Excel, we can see that we need a agility and a fuel here, and I'm just going to plug those numbers in right now. So, warhead strength. Uh, our water strength is 2.25, that gets us to 9 damage. Our fuel capacity, 
looking up on here, we want a fuel capacity of 3087. That is 0.3087. And an agility of 2813. So 0.2813. And we should see we have a size 6 missile. Warhead of 9. Maneuver rating of 12. Range of 124.2 million kilometers. So almost three times lunar orbit. Uh, with a speed of 25,000 kilometers per second. Cost per missile of, well, that's acceptable. And against a target moving at something like, say, three kilometers a second like we do, it's got 97% hit chance. That That's really good. 96% hit chance is pretty good. Uh, if we encounter an enemy going really fast, we've still got like a 30% hit chance. So yeah, I like this missile. I quite like this missile. And I'm going to create it. And we are going to create it as the Chipmunk Dog. Size 6 anti-ship missile. Um, I probably want to put more data in there because that currently doesn't tell me like um, its speed, its range, uh, its warhead value. So I probably want to give that a little bit more data. So we're going to call you the... I'm going to go with... I'm going to shorten Chipmunk Dog to Dog or Chipmunk. You know, Chipmunk, because I can't fit quite so much in because I know that we've been pushing our limit with stuff like Shane Kills Corp. It's been filling up the tables. Um, so, you're an anti-ship missile, so I'm going to call you an ASM, uh, which actually stands for air-to-surface missile, but since that's not a thing in this game, you're an anti-ship missile, so ASM. Um, so you're an S6, so size 6, ASM, and then let's put some stats in. So I need to know it's a Warhead 9, um, I need to know it's range, and it's velocity, and maybe to hit chances, I'm not sure about that. Probably not the hit chances. I'm not too worried about that. So range and probably velocity. So we'll give you an R of... We'll round it. And a speed of 26... It's 25k. So there we go. So the Chipmunk S6 uh, ASM W9 R124 S25k. A long name for a missile. We could probably lose the speed, but I uh, can't be bored. So we're going to create that. Bam. Now, we also want to make an anti-missile missile. Come on, Excel. Now, for this, we only want a desired damage of one. But we also require a total missile size of one. So what do we have here? We have, if we want a chance to hit very fast moving missiles. Ooh. This isn't great. Well, we'll have to make do. Let's see. Uh, I would like an agility of point... Call it point 0.8 and point 0.3. Point 0.08 and point 0.3 for now. Because we'll have to start eyeballing this. So point... Uh, you're point 0.3, aren't you? And you're point 0.08. Okay. So... We're looking at 24% at 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers. So I'm not running far off the current numbers. All right, we need to decrease the size a little bit because we're currently about 10% over the size limit. So I'm going to decrease the fuel amount. Which is actually fine. Though this will impact uh, the speed later on. Uh, if I decrease the fuel to like... We're really shortening the range, but I like that shorter range. I don't mind having a shorter range, provided it means we can get a much better to hit chance. I wish I knew what the numbers were after this, because 10 kilometers per second isn't enough to be able to gauge its use against missiles. Damn. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. Right. So, what range have we got at the moment? I would like you to be able to cover a little bit less. Because I don't want you going too far, because it's going to make sensors difficult. We'll get to sensors in a bit. Let's say... 60 million kilometers. And agility... Why don't we buff that to, like, 
So we're a little bit short there. We can go bigger. We can go bigger still. 36% chance. Aha! We found a tipping point. Okay. And we can increase the fuel amount ever so slightly. Sure, we'll go with that. 65 million kilometer range. Maneuvering 16, etc. Blah, blah, blah. One size missile. And it's, yeah, it's named it an anti-missile missile. It's got it right. Okay. We can make this. Excellent. Right, you are going to be the... Chip Monk AMM Anti-Missile Missile uh, Sorry, Size 1 AMM With a Warhead Bun Range 65 And Speed of 22K A thousand kilometers per second which is annoying because it's uh, thousand, thousand. So it should be just million meters, but whatever. And we'll create this. So we're going to have to research this as well. But I do fancy having a ridiculously large, slightly longer range missile. So if we want to have a damage of 25. So let's say like a desired damage of 25. Uh, missile size points. We're not going to be able to get it with a missile size point of one. That's fine. What if we were, say... Nine missile size points. We could. But judging by the optimal for like high speed, etc. We wouldn't get that much range. What if we went for like a 12? Large missile. Okay, suddenly we're looking more feasible. I would choose to cut this in favor of more fuel. To have the range, the speed down here. And to have the fuel higher so it can get the higher range going. But I still think that the engine is probably going to be the right amount. So we're going to start ballparking it now. Because this is saying, right, if you want really fast missiles, this is what you do. I would like a slightly slower missile, but one that has a proper punch. But I think this may be a little bit too complex for our very first base. Two types of missile, one main missile and an anti-missile missile is probably fine. I don't want to start loading up with, like, an extra type of missile. So for now, we'll leave it as it is. We can close that. And I believe... If we go to research, and if we look under uh, missiles, kinetic weapons, we should have the chipmunks here. Right. I would like you to um, do that. And then the chipmunk, I would like to queue. Ooh, wait, can I, like... How do I do this? Right, let's try. Right. Aha! Right, so I've got Callum accepted. So if I click that, Q, Callum's just going to go straight onto that when done. Excellent. Right, how long will that take you? Five days. So if I do five days, we might get both if we're lucky. Research and chipmunk completed. Have we not completed the other one quite yet? Oh, because it's a larger missile, it's taking a little bit longer. So that'll take you until the end of the month. So if we went five, five, five. Yes, we've completed it. Sweet. So we now have two different types of missile. And I think this is where we're going to end today's episode. Now, the next job is going to be designing a sensor system to be able to detect. And for that, we'll want to just get our active grav sensors like as high as possible. The problem is, unfortunately, Karen Gibson isn't skilled enough and still isn't skilled up. It's going to be annoying, but fine. Uh, 30 days time, we'll have that. So 30 days, we should be able to start work on our PDC. And actually, no, we need to then design that into a sensor, which we need to then research and then design our PDC. Ugh. But I've been everything. If you enjoyed, please like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. We'll be back with Aurora 4X shortly, because I am addicted to this game. Now, before we just actually run away, let's do our regular checkup on Mars. 
91% carbon dioxide. With a surface temperature of 31 degrees! We're getting there. We're getting there. We've already increased the temperature by 17 degrees. Global warming action, guys. Global warming action. Oh, I'm loving it. By the way, if we get the ice sheet to melt, we can then increase the albedo of the planet, the reflectiveness, because, you know, oh, sorry, it decreases the albedo of reflectiveness, and thus the planet absorbs more light, and thus it will heat up suddenly. Um, so by decreasing the uh, ice sheets, you can cause a massive jump in temperature. So you could probably get it up from zero to about 20. It should make it really, really nice for people to live on. Like, they're happy living at minus four, just. But if we can get it to 20, they'd be very pleased. Um, so I might just get to about zero, or just shy of, and then I'll add oxygen. And then when we've got enough oxygen, people should be happy to live there. Oh, this is working so well. I'm so pleased. Anyway, till next time, stay shiny.